Now, before Jesus ascended back to, to heaven, uh, he, he gathered his disciples. And in John 14, 26, he tells them this about the role of the Holy Spirit. He says, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He, the Holy Spirit, will remind you of all the things I have told you. You see, without the help of the Holy Spirit, we really can't see what God wants us to see in this book. If the Holy Spirit does not provide that illumination for us, well, we, we may as well be reading a novel or, or the newspaper. So the work of the Holy Spirit is, is to help us to understand not only the truth of God's word, but how it applies to, 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 to daily living. Uh, and then uh, another support scripture for this, this matter of illumination. Uh, it, the, the Apostle Paul was praying for the church at Ephesus. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, he, he, he asked this of the Lord. He says, I ask the glorious Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you his spirit. What's the spirit going to do? This is what he says in his prayer. The spirit will make you wise and let you understand what it means to know God. Paul goes on, I pray, and this is, the, I love this word picture, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. So to help us understand more fully what illumination is all about, I, in this uh, never-ending sermon, <laughs> I've been uh, telling stories. Not when God opens the eyes of your heart, you'll see the defense for what's attacking you. At different points in life, every one of us uh, will come under some sort of attack. I don't know, maybe you're... there's a third story I want to share. It's, uh, it's in 2 Kings chapter 6. It's the story of Elisha and the Arameans. The Look at verse 17. Elisha started to pray. <laughs> And here's what happened when he prayed and how he prayed. He prayed for his servant. He prayed for his assistant. He, he, he said, Lord, open his eyes. Praying for his servant. Open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then what happened? Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw. That's illumination. What did he see? He saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. When God opens the eyes of your hearts, you'll begin to see that he's, he's walking with you. He's right there with you. You see, whenever you, we go through difficult times, it's easy to feel isolated, to feel like we're all alone, to feel like that we, we're the only person in the world going through what we're we're going through, but the truth is, you're never alone. God's there, isn't he? We know that. God's there all the time. Here's the last story I want to share. It's from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. And uh, here's the backdrop. In a 72-hour period of time, our Lord had been arrested. He had been whipped and beaten and tortured, crucified, died, buried. You'll remember in a borrowed tomb. His disciples were absolutely crushed. They were full of, of fear. Uh, they, they thought that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, and now he's dead. And, and they're thinking, okay, because we're his disciples, they're going to come after us next. And it's going to be over for us too. And look what happens in verse 31. All at once, their eyes were opened. <laughs> and they realized it was Jesus. <laughs> Can you imagine the look on their face? <laughs> they, they must have been looking at each other like a calf looking at a new gate. And it hits them. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. We've <laughs> Silly us, we've been talking to him all day long. We've been walking with him. We've been telling him what, what happened to, well, him. <laughs> their eyes were opened. That's illumination. You see, in their fear, in their grief, in their heartache, 
They couldn't see that Jesus was there the whole time. To get illumination from the Holy Spirit, you've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the starting point. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you won't be able to see the things of God. You'll only be able to see things from a human point of view. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned how? Only through the Holy Spirit. The second thing we have to do, I'll hurry, is to ask God in faith to open our eyes. Uh, every time, every time we, we open this book, we ought to pray, pray this prayer from the psalm, Psalm 119, 18. Open my eyes to see wonderful things in your word. Did you know, you know this, this book is overflowing with wonder filled things but if you're spiritually blind you won't see them it takes illumination third to experience illumination we've got to approach God's word with with humility read God's word with an open heart and a humble spirit Psalm 25 9 he guides the humble he guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way uh, number four Empty your heart, if you're going to experience illumination, empty your heart of life's impurities. With all of the garbage, with all the impurities that we take in from this world every day, it makes it difficult to see the things of God. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8 in the Beatitudes, he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they, what? They shall see God. You can't see the things of God if your heart isn't pure, being pure in heart means that your salvation is up to date. There's nothing between your soul and the Savior. Look, look at what John writes, 1 John 2, 11. But if we hate others, we are in the, what? The darkness. There's no light there. There's no illumination. We walk in it and do not know where we are going because the darkness has made us blind. Open our eyes, folks, to experience illumination I think it's important that we say yes, that we commit in advance as we open up the word of God, that we say a yes in advance, that, that God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Look at this, look at this one last Psalm, Psalm 119 again, verses 33 and 34. Here's what the psalmist prayed, just tell me, Lord, what to do, and I will do it. As long as I live, I'll wholeheartedly obey.